There you are. Hey guys, welcome to Encourage. This is Youth Cube. Woohoo! Um, you do. They should be up there. Um, pair team meeting every Tuesday of each month. So um, the first Tuesday will be at, uh, we'll, we'll be at Jason's house. I presume we'll be at Jason's house. Um, five, what's six? On the sixth. On the sixth of July. Yeah. Um, and we'll we'll do prayer at Jason's house. So it'll be worship. Um, we'll do prayer. We'll talk about it. We'll just talk and have fun afterwards as well. Um, the day treat is also on August, so that will be the all dayer instead of all nighter, kind of like last time. Um, but it should be in August. It will be in August. For sure. That's we're, we're working on it. Okay. Summer <coughs> baptism. So if you guys want to come and get baptized, I don't know where we'll do it. We'll probably do it in the lake, like uh, like Jason was talking about. Yep. Um, it's just a good place to. <coughs> Get baptized if you never get baptized, or get baptized again. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Preach it, bro. Sunday. Sunday's a great time to come and uh, help. There are teams you can come join. Um, I don't remember all the teams, but we have a lot of teams to come and join us. Um, there's definitely places where you guys can help and come on and have fun on Sunday. Um, it's just a great time to meet new people. A lot of adults. Come, like Jimmy, my grandma, <laughs> Scott, and uh, Cody sometimes. Yeah. Depends, on, depends on how he's feeling. And Jason's always there. And Derek, we love Derek. He's back there. You yeah, yeah. D. And uh, you hide him behind the bridge. Amen. Amen. Oliver. All right, stand everybody, stand, everybody stand and greet each other in the name of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> This one I'm not about to knock over a tripod. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm 
guy. I'm just putting my hands in. Joking. Guys, let's ask him to okay? That's all I'm asking. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Let's, 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 all right. Let's worship the Lord. No distractions. Leave the person next to you alone. Okay? Leave the person next to you alone. They're not that important right now. Okay? That's what's important. Okay? That cross right there is everything. If you're talking to the person next to you, you're probably not worshiping. Pretty good proof indicator. Right? I don't want to have Jimmy, our ex-service military man, take you out and throw you out. Probably just do it to hear something. Alright, let's worship the Lord. God who saves, we sing to the 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 God who saves, we sing to the
less of me and a whole heck of a lot more of you, God. We just kneel before you and your reverence, Lord, and your love, and we just, we just accept you to come in this place and change hearts today. Chisel us, Lord, and make us new and help us to be accepting of that, of your word and your truth and your love today. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, Amen. 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 This. Thanks, Pastor. Brother Man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Hey, I will, uh, yeah, that actually might be great. I don't know how I'm going to handle it today. Today is kind of a. Who needs Bibles? You have everybody have a Bible? Because you can't. You can't look at the word about the Bible, man. Woo! We got coffee on it. We got coffee on it. You stay. And, Jay, do you want me to continue recording or? <laughs> AC or something? Box right there. <laughs> the box right above your head. Yep. Can you open that? Crank that all the way up. Yeah, that's why it's so hot. Yeah. Holy Whew. I wonder how it's playing. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I thought it was just the spirit. That probably still was. Yeah. Too much coffee or something. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That's what they did. Yeah. 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 Yeah
never changes. So we're going to rest on that. Um, yeah, there is a lot of, man, this is hard for me. This isn't about me. But this, this is really hard for me because I've been having to admit to a lot of things lately that I don't do well. I don't do well. And who, anybody raise your hand? Anybody like admitting your faults? No. Nope. Okay, absolutely nobody. Katrina kind of likes it. <laughs> Getting better Sometimes at it. I get that guilty ice cream when I admit my faults, man. And everybody's like, ooh. I love admitting stuff now. I'm just kidding. How do you do it? <laughs> I do. So, um, yeah, let's get in the word a little bit. So Luke chapter 15. Okay. Everybody there? Yo, yo. Okay. Because guess what? Oliver messed me up and had me look for stuff because I had to find it for him and now I'm not there. Just me on stage. Like five minutes before. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. You should be in verse 11. Okay, verse 11, and if I, by the way, if you have an Apple device at home or somewhere, I want to encourage you to something. One of the biggest things that's hard to do when you're studying the Bible is to, if you're like me, or maybe you're not like me, I, I, don't, I, I usually try to deep dive on words, but if you're that person that when you read the Bible, you come across a word that you don't understand or don't know, if you have an Apple device or a Mac or whatever, there's this Bible app. And they actually have it for Android now. So if you have an Android or whatever, you have a tablet where you knock stuff over, that's cool. <laughs> um, Grace, that's cool. We love Kobe and Derek. Um, there's a Bible app called eSword. And it has like commentaries, it has maps. It has a lot of cool things that when you read it, you can go on the side and understand, oh, that's what it's like in Egypt. That's what it looks like. So when you're reading, and you're trying to read the context of what it's like to live in that day, there's a lot of commentary and extra info to help you understand and grasp what you're reading. Okay? And I lot and because here's the thing. Not everybody who proclaims they love Jesus actually loves the truth of Jesus. Some people take the gospel and they distort it for their own benefit. There are people, there are people preaching that are teaching you to go to your bank ATM and if you think you don't have a lot of money to literally scream at your ATM that you have money and you have loads of money and yeah, there's people that teach this kind of theology and it's like that's that's not the point. We believe God will bless us. God is the only one that speaks anything in existence. Okay? I'll tell you right now. But hey, if it's not if it's from us, it's probably not from God. Okay, but God speaks that truth. He is the foundation of truth. He is what He is. The Alpha Omega, okay? But so when you read the Bible, if I'm up here, Jimmy's up here, Oliver's up here, whoever, and there's something being taught, and it doesn't line up with this book, you go home, you read that book, and you see what it's taught, that's a problem. Okay? So we want to be very cautious. We need to handle the Bible like the Bible is very precious. It's God's truth. And when you actually go read it, you don't find the contradictions that these people that looked at one verse found. Because they didn't read the before of the Old Testament. They didn't read the later what Paul encountered. If you actually read it in context. So I want to encourage you, if you don't have a Bible, come talk to me. I have, I still have study Bibles. I would love to give them out. I don't want to give them out to people who already have them and just don't bring them. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, I do want to bless you. If, that, if it's a money thing, don't let that be a money thing. Let's get a Bible in your hands. Amen. Okay? If you don't know how to read the Bible, talk to me. I would love, I would love to go through it with you. Anyway. Okay. Let's read it. We're going to do this. We're going to do something <coughs> totally different. I'm going to try to be time sensitive. But not, not that that's important, right? To let the Holy Spirit move. But we're going to try reading the Bible in a totally different way today. No, I'm not reading it in Chinese or anything. Like oh, that. dang. Whatever. Epic about We're going to go like this. We're going to go Boop. down the line. Okay? And there's not a lot of verses, but there's enough. So we're going to start <coughs> at Luke chapter 15, verse 11, and everybody's going to read a verse. Boom, 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 until we're done. And if you guys don't get to read one, you lucked out today, but not next Wednesday. Come on, You're man. You're going to start it next Wednesday. Don't give me that look. Jason, we have enough people that everybody's going to read it. Yeah, perfect. All right, Andrew. Everybody, some of your versions might be different. Okay? All right, let's go. Start it out, Andrew. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said, his father, Father, give me my 
my share of the estate. So he divided his prop, uh, property between them. said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on, on his finger and sandals on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and lest us eat and be merry. Job. It's cool. Everybody reading. We, we, we skipped them, but we'll, we'll get these three later. We'll get them. It's not a get them. Did you, did you listen to what we just read there? Okay. We're going to talk about the prodigal son. We're going to do it. It's not going to be the super. I would love to talk about it for hours. Because the parable of the prodigal son is literally jam packed. You can do at least three weeks, like three different, I can do three different messages on it. We used to do it. There is so much to talk about and what God speaks through that section of scripture. Okay? What do you know about the word prodigal? What do you think Jimmy? Like, what about this? What's prodigal, Jimmy? Wasteful. Wasteful. What are some other words that are like prodigal? Squandered all as well. Right? Have you guys ever lived in your life and lived in a, or maybe, maybe mom and dad gifted you or you were given something that you, or made a decision that you found was wasteful? And what I mean wasteful means that you were in a situation and you had the ability to make a decision, but the decision you actually made maybe wasn't the one, if you went back in time, that you'd make again. Have you ever done that? Nobody, nobody's done that. Everybody's made like perfect decisions. Wow. Where Jesus must be here then. I'm not picking on you. You don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. We want to, we want to. we want to encourage a comfortable environment, but you can be honest here. Prodigal son is put, he's put in a situation, okay? He says, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And so it was divided. So the younger son went off, took a journey, and he lived this life. Sent, squandered everything, 
and lived what was called basically in reckless living, just didn't care, had zero thought of what he was doing, was selfish, without plan. Okay? Does that anybody anybody just go and do things without thinking about the consequences? Do you go and do things without, you know, like you have anybody drive who drives here? Is there anybody who drives here? Have you ever, uh, I think I've been in this moment like you, have you ever thought the road was clear or you kind of had that, oh, I can pull out, make a turn, nobody's coming, and all of a sudden that car is like right there. Okay, y'all who don't drive, you're going to be in that situation. And that'll, if you're in that situation, it's a way for the call. I drive with you. Okay? I know Oliver drives 80 miles an hour, but I want to I put some words in. I have some things up here, Derek. I'm going to move to the next slide <laughs> real quick. So... There, there's a thing with the prodigal son, it's a really big deal, and a, and a lot of times, okay, we don't, when it comes to having to be right, and when we make decisions, the way we live our life, and the way that we breathe on this earth, there's a lot of reasons why we don't do the right thing, or we don't do what God has already instilled in our heart, okay? There is not a conscience in you because evolution designed one and decided what was right and wrong. There's not a, there's not an evolution reason why you have feelings and guilt and shame. Those things were instilled in you in the very beginning of time when God created. See, because God is the standard of what's right and wrong. Without this, without God, we, there would be it'd be, it'd be reckless, it'd be purge, which is an inappropriate movie. You shouldn't watch it, but it's got it's got an interesting message about how we live today. Because and I have not seen it. I only need to see it. What's it about? But I laughed and kind of, I didn't really laugh. I kind of felt bad because that's how we live today in our own life. And that's how a lot of people live. is careless, reckless, no law, no right. Just do what you want. And there's nobody to judge it. Imagine that. No teachers, you go to school, no students, nobody to teach you, to guide you. That's pretty terrifying. The people that are guiding you, horrible things. But there's a reason we live like that, and some of you might be able to relate to this. There's a lot of reasons why we avoid doing what we should do, and what we know is right, deep down here. We all have a conscience like that. Some of us deal with jealousy. Anybody been jealous of anything? Yeah. Yeah. I'm jealous because I can't have a sweet, bald head like that. You can make that happen. Clippers, man. No, no, no. I've been bald, and it's bad. I, I, they, people at Target would go, hey, do you work here? And I'm like, bro, senior team leader. Oh, oh Jason, oh, yeah. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> and, you know, I think we could probably relate to the prodigal son. The prodigal son, in this sense, and why he went off and did what he did. Is he's prideful. He's prideful. I can do whatever I want. I'm the man. Right, Oliver? No, don't tell me that. You're saying that. No, I'm not saying that. Some of us were avoiding and doing what's right, or maybe avoiding the truth is shame. Some of you have made decisions, and I've made decisions. This this is really hard for me to talk about, Prodigal Son, because I don't know how many times I've ran away from people that I've loved and actually cared about me, and I've ran away from God. Because I can't deal with you looking at me and me knowing where I've been wrong. You ever feel like that? Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody does. Guilt. Guilt. Being made to feel, you just feel so horrible about everything, and guilt turns into you're the worst person that ever lived. And guilt is a little different than shame because guilt grabs hold of you with an evil conscience and start sending you down a path where Satan wants you. I can't imagine being the son in this case, squandering everything that my father gave me and going, man, I, man I'm so welcome to home. I can't wait to go home. I, probably that's not, probably not how he felt. Especially not in this day, this type of society back then. You lived way different. The way you honor your parents way different. You thought traditions when your parents were, you know, at your age were a big deal, it, it's thicker and more sincere way back then. I mean, you, <laughs> we were treated a lot differently as kids back then. Not to say it's better now or worse, it's just different, okay? Guilt. 
you ever, have you ever been out on a youth group night and you know you're supposed to be here and something tells you that you shouldn't go? You ever feeling inside? Everybody's wanting to be here 100% of the time every single Wednesday? Wow. Maybe, I, maybe I'm the only one that dealt with this in youth group when I was your age. So when I was your age, when I met Jesus and then I went off and I will start walking the faith walk, okay? Wednesdays would come along and I swear to you not, there were the weirdest oppositions that made me not want to go to youth group. And some of those were unfounded and not real. Just like the sun, there would be the weirdest reasons and deep, deep battles that would make me not want to go home to my father, essentially. I'm not going to insert ourselves in that story, but for his sake, making those decisions. I mean, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Ever felt like that, mom and dad? Or even maybe let's take it deeper. Have God, I'm no longer aware that you called your son. I don't know how many times I've been in ministry and I've come to my knees and go, God, I'm not worthy to lead these people. Not worthy. I've messed up. Your plan was this and I did this. Oliver came up to me and I talked to him like this. You've given me your farm, you've given me these people, you've given me an amazing family, and I've squandered it. Reckless. That hurts. It's hard. I want to give you some hope today. What do we find out with the son? The son comes home. Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. What's the father do before that? What does what the father do before? So look at verse 20. His father saw him and felt compassion and ran. Did you ever think a word could be that powerful? His father ran. It says, he arose and came, said, so while he was still a long way off. There's a reason it's saying long way off. Probably not from here to this window. Back in the day, we didn't have as much stuff going on. We have too much stuff today. We have buildings for no reason almost today. But his father saw him a long way off and ran. And ran. Didn't walk. Didn't, oh, hey, son, you're home. I always came home and my mom was doing dishes and said, oh, you're home. I could be gone like three days. And she, oh, you're home. <laughs> Laundry's over. His father saw him and ran to him. Look at it. I'm, I'm, that's just what it says. It ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son still said, Father, I've sinned against you, against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And as Jean said, the father said to his servants, Quick, bring quickly the best robe. Put it on and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it. Which, by the way, if you got a fattened calf back in the day, that was a big deal. That was celebration. Okay? Livestock and food, that was a huge deal back in the day. That, your presence you get today was literally like a calf back then. That was a big deal. Okay? Uh, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and now he was lost and is found, and they. Listen, I don't know what all you got to go through, okay? I know that some of you are here for the first time, and some of you come back, and some of you, you started the Jesus path, and then you've, you've encountered the opposition because being a Christ follower is very difficult. Everybody thinks you're crazy. You believe in your invisible sky daddy, whatever the comments are. Want, and then sometimes you, you deal with that opposition, so that's, that's a real deception to be here. And some of you, you compare yourself to each other in your faith walk, and that's 
We'll get into that in a second. Some of you come and you feel like you're not worthy to be here. You're not cared about. I want to tell you something right now. Okay? There is nothing that you can do to divide yourself from the love of the Father. You are welcome in this place, no matter how dirty or filthy, as the Bible calls it, dirty and filthy rags. No matter how dirty it gets, and how filthy it gets, and how rough and scarred you are, and how, how guilt-ridden you are, how shame-ridden you are, how deceived you may be, how prideful you have been, how much pride has divided you from people, how much, and man, in this group, we have had relationships come on the edge of mountains, or people jumping off, and Satan coming in trying to divide it, and God has conquered it every time. Amen. God has brought this body together every time. Listen, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how the decisions you make outside, no matter how rough they are, how terrible they are, how hurtful they are, you can always come back to God every single time. Every single time. And in this place, in our youth group, you are welcome every single time. There is nothing that should keep us from loving each other. And, in this, and see, in the, the, the way the world teaches us to be accepted and loved, you need to be accepting and tolerant of their ideas. And that's how you, you, you get with people that have the same likes. My guess is Jimmy and I have a lot of differences in the things where we like and enjoy, but we can be really close because there's one thing we have in common is we love Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We both love our wives with everything we can. We love our kids. We don't need to share those similarities because we can love each other without them. The similarities, the similarities I mean when I say that is the things that are of this world. We, don't, we, we both do share one thing, though, is we know the world's corrupt and we know Jesus is good. So you can have blonde hair, brown hair, you can like blue, green, red. Liking something sinful might be a little questionable, but we all like, we're all sinners, and we do like sin at times, so that's, that happens. But listen, God will never refuse you. Amen. The only one that refuses anybody is when we refuse our Heavenly Father from coming back to Him. This has got to be hopeful today. You're going to come in here and you're going to say, Jimmy's going to say, hey, how are you doing? And you're going to say, I'm good, I'm great. And there's not going to be good and great going on in here. There's going to be a deception for you to not be honest. You're going to go right into Kobe. Kobe go, hey, how are you doing? I'm great. And you're going to be like the son in the story saying, really deep down, I'm not worthy to be here. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. I messed up. I messed up so bad that I can't return. God says, fool you to that. God takes the slave on the cross, the robber, the thief. And he says, the thief says, remember me in heaven. One day remember me. And Jesus says, I'll see you there. There is a place for you in the family. Amen. It doesn't matter how deep that hole is. That road of chiseling will be hard, you bet. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our God is faithful. Give you some points. God loves us. Ephesians chapter 3. If you don't believe so, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you some hope today. If you don't feel like you're loved today, well, here's the thing. If nobody in this room shows you love, well, that's bad on us. We need to do a better job. But I'm going to tell you right now, the first most important piece of love is that God loves you. And I'll prove it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18 through 19. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 18 through 19. Now, I don't want to read it. I want somebody else to read it. If I read it, it's mm. easy. Just go ahead and read it. May be able to comprehend with all pain that is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ, which has set to knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Wow. You will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. 
May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Wow. Dude, that, that hits my soul, because I think about the, when I think of prodigal, the wastefulness, I think the wastefulness of a lot of the decisions I've made in my life, and I go, God, there's no way you could accept me with that. <laughs> And he says, I'll accept you. And not only that, I'm going to help you. He's going to help us turn from it. Yep. Get away from the wastefulness. So when we talk about progress, some of your folks on the wastefulness and some of the other aspects that distract us, I don't want to, I don't want to say, I don't want to be telling you so much and how deep our decisions are, your, your decisions are just wasteful, though. The real, the real thing here is, is that the more you learn about God and the more you trust God, you learn about the things we do in our daily life that are essentially wasteful. They're not eternal. And God has so much more for you. And not, talk, not talking like he's going to fill your bank account. That's not what I'm saying. The happiest I've been is when I've had a lot less in that bank account and a whole lot more of Jesus. Truth. God loves you, man. How long, how high, and how deep his love is for you. We have zero comprehension of that. A God who's all-powerful sends Jesus, comes in flesh form, and dies. He could just wipe us out. He could have put us in our place. No, 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 no. Send Jesus so that we would recognize and be free and atone of the sin and, and recognize God's love for us. What God does that? Especially for a sinner like me. It's just like the father who hugs and embraces his son. I'm just so excited you're home. There's nothing you can, it's almost, <laughs> does it, it's just crazy. God wants us, here's the next part, very important part. We talked about when we come back, here's the thing. This is more important than the love part. And we don't, we forget about this all the time. God wants us to repent from the things that keep us from him. The sin. And we look at that in a bad light. We go, you're just trying to get me to make the right decisions. Well, yeah, there are right decisions, but here's the thing. The sin issue is not just that it's evil. The sin issue is that it divides you from the one who really loves you. It's not just that there's a sin issue and there's guilt and there's shame and it tags on and, 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 and we call ourselves sinners and we've been sinful. It's that the sinfulness is what divides us from the one who has the most desire for us, who is God. And as we live a sinful life very deep, we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Or sorry, 1 John, John. chapter 1, verse 9. You guys are probably right there. Probably saw it on the screen. Right? God is faithful yep, and very just. Good. So, and I like to explain it this way, guys. Because when we talk about our plans, people go, well, I'm always going to sin. And it's just, that's just how it is, and I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna deal with it. And the problem is, is with that attitude is that you're not allowing God to change your heart fully. Because the sin isn't just that, the, that it's labeled bad. That's not the problem. That's, that's that is a problem, but that's not the whole problem. The whole problem is, is when we accept sin, lust, pride, those things, when we accept it and are okay with it. It starts, it starts to distort. You know what distort means? What's distort mean? Change? Did you lose change? So sin starts to cause deception and mug our, and mug our view and cause like, it starts to scramble the way we see God. And it starts to interfere with the way we see God. Because that's what, that's, that's what divides us from God is sin. And that's the biggest problem. Is the farther we get away from God, man, the farther. <laughs> death. Death. Corruption. That's not what God had intended for us. So we read 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Joseph, go ahead and read it. First and second and third John, Jude, and Revelation. Yeah,
confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. All. All. It's like going home and he goes, tell mom and dad, yeah, I did this, and mom and dad are imperfect sinners like you. We try to love our kids. But I tell you, when Rylan does something to really make me mad, to be honest, I go, yeah, I forgive you, son. Come on, I'm going like, oh, oh, like deep down. And God is just. Don't get me wrong. Yep. But we need to want, I mean, man, guys, he wants us to turn away from that evil to just embrace us more and more and more and more. And he's taught people in the world shouldn't get enough of you. Like, they don't want enough of you. That's probably true. Like, some of y'all, I, I don't know. But, me too. But, I, I can't stand me. So, I don't know how I'd hang out with me any time of the day. But God wants to embrace us. And he forgives us and purifies us from all unrighteousness. Could leave us where we're at. But just like the father and the prodigal son, he sees us as we come to him. When we come to him, he embraces us. And he forgives us. And we ask for it. So you're welcome. The journey of Christian <coughs> walk is going to be hard. Come into this place. Come home. Ask for Ask for forgiveness. Be honest. Seek what God has for you. And if you're not doing that today, ask Jesus to come into your life today. Expect change today. It's going to be a rocky road. It's going to be hard. But when as you learn about God and love, you learn that the, person, the only one who has perfect love intent for you shame are you holding on to today? What's keeping you from being real with God today? What decisions have you made to cause corruption and, dis and, and, and maybe separation is the best word, separation in between you and God, or what's separating you from believing in God? You feel like you're not good enough? Or maybe you're not trusting God with an aspect of your life, and you're not willing to come home because of the decisions you want to make or already made. Turn it over to God today. Amen. Right now. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Father God, we just come to you, Lord. And we just, Lord, like the prodigal son, we have we've at times abandoned you and, and, and left you, like he did his father, Lord. And we've made decisions and, and believed in things that maybe were not of you. And, and we've let you down, God. And that's a hard thing to do, is to let anyone down that you love. So, God, you are faithful. God, you are forgiving. And you're righteous, Lord. And you seek that for us. Not just for yourself, Lord, but you call us to you. You try to bring us to you so that we can see the way you see the world. And see the way you see life. And see others the way that you see them. Lord, there is no speck of dirt or rag or blotch in our life that you can't forgive and that you can't wash clean. And we just ask for your spirit to overwhelm us and, and just and remind us of your goodness, God. Bless us today as we, we divide up and we talk about this. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen.